Today is Sunday, May 22nd, and this is William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. I'd like to talk today about false ideas about classical education that are commonly promoted by men and women who try to try to get into the business of education focusing on classical education as some kind of niche market that they're hoping to make some money off of I'd like to talk about how they try to um, capitalize on problems in modern education and, and how they present false false ideas about the history of education as if no one is ever going to hold them accountable as if no one really knows and they can just say whatever they want I'd like to talk about what classical education really is and how it relates to the Catholic life first of all when we talk about classical education we're not talking about going back to pre-Christian Greek education and just pursuing some kind of uh, secular pagan learning that's not what we're talking about pre-Christian education the kind we find in ancient Greece and to some degree in ancient Rome was waiting for the fulfillment of divine revelation it was temporary and ignorant it was blinded and incomplete the work that the philosophers did was amazing because they they worked so hard to learn as much as they could about human nature about the natural world around us as well as about the invi invisible world and about God himself they learned all that they basically could learn by human observation and reason alone and this is what makes the ancient philosophers so admirable is the efforts that they made and they're unjustly criticized by modern Christians who make a fraction of the effort that they made to know God and relative to how much has been revealed modern men know less about God than ancient pagans did and because they can find a fault with something that Aristotle or Plato said they think that they're smarter or as if they're more virtuous where everything's got to be compared relatively relative to the light that we were given that was available to us and so on the ancient pre-christian philosophers were amazing men and they were respected in early Christianity as great wise men but they lacked the light of divine revelation so there were many errors mixed into their teaching because they they simply couldn't know certain things they couldn't answer certain questions and on those issues they had to take their best guess and they were often wrong when they did so usually because they didn't think highly enough about God and about the future of man but when the Christian church was established when Jesus Christ was sent into the world to finish and perfect all divine revelation all of these questions were answered maybe not in full but at least in seed form the answers were provided it would simply take time for the church to reflect upon that revelation and tease out all of its implications which the church continues to do today but once the Christian church was established and divine revelation was completed the church didn't reject and abandon that ancient philosophy but rather embraced and perfected it and as a Catholic man when I talk about classical education what I'm talking about is this union of Christian revelation with ancient pre-Christian philosophy 
In God's providence, the great philosophers lived before Christ. There have never been philosophers uh, comparable to Plato and Aristotle or Pythagoras after Christ. And much of the, 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 the matter of philosophy was already settled before Christ came into the world. I believe that that's part of what it means um, when Scripture tells us that Christ came in the fullness of time. I think it was because of the achievements of human philosophy and the level of accuracy to which human philosophy had reached that the time was right for Christ to come into the world philosophically there was a great deal of truth available to men politically the Roman Empire had the whole world in order and I believe that's what it means that Christ came in the fullness of time everything was ready for the church to be established and for the gospel to go out from Israel out to the ends of the earth but classical education is this ancient philosophy married to Christian divine revelation. This is what I mean by classical education. Now, when we consider this education, we have to consider it in the context of ancient Christianity. We can't allow it to be interpreted in the light of modern Protestant Christianity, but we have to understand that this medieval education, classical Catholic education, was Catholic. And this is very important because for us to rightly understand the goals of classical Catholic education, it has to be Catholic. And there's one important reason why. When children are raised with a classical Catholic education, without distractions, without worldly ambitions or anxieties that usually come from their parents, when children are raised and immersed in classical Catholic education, there is a, a natural or logical end to that education and that end is contemplative life the end of classical catholic education is monastic life or life in a religious vocation where those studies continue for the rest of one's life and into eternity this idea of celibacy for the kingdom of heaven is essential to classical Catholic education because it is the logical end for which classical Catholic education prepares a child. When we look at the changes that took place in the modern world as the Protestant Reformation came about, and I, sh I shouldn't use Reformation, I should just use schism. One of the first institutions to be attacked and destroyed in the Protestant countries was the attack on monastic life and religious vocations. The Protestants denied that there was any such thing as a call to virginity or celibacy for the kingdom of God. The Protestants rejected that. King Henry VIII shut down and confiscated the lands of all of the monasteries in England. Religious life was destroyed in Protestant countries. And this is the problem in the modern world. The problem in the modern world is that true philosophy and religion leads children to religious vocations. True education leads to religious vocations. But Christian parents and this includes Catholic parents in the modern world are so heavily influenced by Protestantism that they do not think of religious vocations as 
logical or natural ends to a child's education. From the very beginning, parents are concerned about what the child is going to do for college, where the child is going to work, what kind of career the child's going to have. And these are all the questions that in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus told us not to ask. He said, do not say to yourselves, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? He said, your heavenly father knows that you need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be given to you. Jesus explicitly addressed the temporal, physical, worldly concerns of the people who were listening to his heavenly doctrine and looking at his heavenly life. He was saying to them, come and follow me. Come live my way of life. Come join me in this heavenly-minded Contempt, uh, contemplative life. Come and follow me. Come and be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Don't worry about food and clothing or what you're going to, uh, where you're going to live and so on. Look at the birds of the air. Do they worry about these things? Look at the flowers of the field. Are they worried about these things? How much more important are you than these birds or these flowers? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. This was the life that Jesus taught, and for the first 1,600 years of church history, Christians understood that religious life was the logical end of a Christian education. And classical Catholic education prepared children to understand, appreciate, and pursue religious vocations, or simply a religious contemplative life. Again, in modern times, parents are obsessed about what children are going to do, quote-unquote, in the real world. And by in the real world, what they mean is in the temporal, material world. And these concerns are not matters of prudence. These are anxious cares that Jesus taught us not to worry about. Modern, modern Catholics have imbibed uncritically ideas from Protestant circles. And they're not even conscious of the way they think. They're, they're not aware of the fact that they think and talk about life like Protestants. They're not conscious of it. They think that it's prudent. They think that it's good to be careful. You know, you have to be responsible. And implied, implied in that statement is that seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is irresponsible or careless. And this is the problem with modern Catholic thinking. Children are asked from the time they begin their studies, what are you going to do when you grow up? What are you going to be when you grow up? Where are you going to go to college? What kind of work are you going to do? And they're presented with this modern secular idea of money-making occupations and asked, which one are you going to choose? And the reality is, Catholic children don't need to choose any such occupation because Christ established religious life in the church and God provides for it and will until the end of the world. I was recently talking about this and a deacon commented and said, well, if everyone becomes religious, you know, there won't be any more people. 
And, and these are the kind of irresponsible, silly responses that people make to the call to religious life. When Jesus said, come follow me, nobody stood there and said, oh, well, if we follow you, there won't be any people left. No one said that. We understand that very few are ever going to follow Christ. Christ explained that himself throughout his entire ministry. It's not like we're going to all of a sudden have a million people stumble into religious life and then have a have a crisis because there's no more lay people. That's never going to happen. And talking like that is just stupid. The reality, though, is that there should be far, far more people in religious vocations than there are. And this problem in the church where there's a shortage of priests, there's a shortage of monks and nuns, is a real crisis. We don't have a crisis of there not being enough lay people. We don't have a problem with there not being any people to design roads or bridges or or physicians to to go to when our bodies are sick or or any other temporal occupations. A person doesn't even need to be a Christian to perform well many of the tasks of professional life. I don't need to know that my plumber is a Christian. I want the best plumber that I can find and the best plumber is a man who understands the art of plumbing, not who goes to church on Sunday. We don't need Christian people to be our plumbers. We don't need Christian people to be materialist physicians, which is what modern doctors are. We need Christians to be Christians. We need Christians to be evangelists, to be priests, to be monks, to be teachers and missionaries. These are the principal works of Christian people. And yet we find everyone justifying the pursuit of marriage and secular occupations and somehow saying that they're being called to these things by God as if God gave us the Holy Spirit to fill the world with craftsmen. We know this is not true. And so this is one of the fundamental problems in education among Catholics is that Catholics are living in the light of Protestant teaching about vocations. A Christianity that has no monasteries, a Christianity that has no priesthood, a Christianity that has no nuns, no contemplative life. This is the, this is the mentality or the, the intellectual culture, even of modern Catholics. They see the real world as the world of secular occupation, and they seek to live with what used to be called the Protestant work ethic. But the Protestant work ethic is called Protestant for a reason. It's called Protestant because it's materialistic and temporal. It's something different from the culture that existed in Catholic society before the Protestant schism. Catholics shouldn't be seeking to live according to the Protestant work ethic. Again, it's called Protestant for a reason. Rather, Catholics, Catholic parents, when it comes to education, they should be encouraging their children and providing for their children to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and to trust that if they do so, everything will be provided for them. And therefore, when we come to the question of education and we ask, well, what form of education would best prepare children for this life that Jesus taught? The answer all through church history among all the saints has been a classical Catholic education. This is the purpose of classical Catholic education. 
classical Catholic education serves the contemplative life of Christian people. And this contemplative life is not something that one pays attention to while they're in college. This contemplative life is the end of the whole Christian life. And so classical Catholic education not merely doesn't only begin when children are free to pursue undistracted formal studies, but it continues for their entire lives. And one of the ways we can tell where the true curriculum is, is to simply ask the question, is this a course of studies that one could pursue for their entire life? And if we look at modern schools and modern curricula, we'll see, no, this, this curriculum is not capable of supplying a Christian person with content for study and meditation for their whole life. This is designed only to meet the requirements of modern grade level studies. This isn't a real Christian curriculum. This is an artificial, secular, temporal K to 12 curriculum. This isn't the this isn't the Christian curriculum. But when we go back and look at the medieval curriculum, the classical Catholic curriculum, we find a course of studies that one can begin as a child and continue for their entire life. So this is an easy way for us to know what the true Christian curriculum is. It serves the Christian life. And no K-12 curriculum can do so. So the first thing that Catholics should be concerned with in raising their children is raising them to obey Christ's teaching. The message of the homeschool, the message of the Catholic school to children should be, Jesus says to you, come, follow me. Jesus calls you to live the life of a saint. Jesus calls you to forsake everything, to go sell all you have, give it to the poor and come follow me and you will have treasure in heaven. Jesus says, do not worry about what you're going to eat or drink or where you'll live. All of these things will be provided for you. God promises you that. And once parents can clear their mind of all of these secular distractions and stop thinking like Protestants and realize that contemplative life and religious vocations is the logical end of a true Christian education, they can then begin to think soberly and reasonably about the education of their children. And when they do so, and they look for that curriculum which will help their children get started in this contemplative life, they'll find that curriculum in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. That's what it is. Now, the problem with people who get into this talk of classical education but don't understand it, people who are pretending to understand something, to pretend to be teachers, who, who haven't yet studied, who don't understand what they're talking about, they think like Protestants, but they're Catholics. When they talk about classical education, they have no idea what they're talking about because they themselves have not come to understand and live this contemplative life. They themselves don't understand it. They may understand what religious life is. They may know about priests and monks and nuns, and point to them as people over there, those people who do these things. But we'll find that they don't know much about secular religious communities like the Third Order of St. Dominic or the Oblates of St. Benedict or the, the secular uh, orders among Franciscans or Carmelites. They don't understand that the contemplative life is also a secular vocation. It's not for some special people, some hobbits who live far off in other lands. 
The contemplative life and religious vocations are the normal end of Christian learning, of Christian sanctification. And that's why almost every saint that you can name, maybe, maybe every saint that you can name was either a priest, a monk, a nun, or a lay person who was a member of a secular religious community. Thomas More, for example, was a secular Franciscan. Catherine of Siena was a lay Dominican. Even the lay people among the saints were involved in religious communities. These people don't understand these things. They don't know about these things. They think and live like Protestants, and they get involved in education, and they can't think outside of the modern secular school box. Now, the reason why they get interested in so-called classical education is because they're ambitious in worldly things. They want their kids to go to college. They want their kids to become doctors and lawyers. It's always about becoming a doctor. It's always about becoming a lawyer or an engineer, a high-paying secular career. That's always the concern. They won't say that, but it's always the concern. Everyone's going to be a doctor. And their interest in classical education is simply that they think that some, something different, something different from the modern curriculum, or that at least appears different, something that can create an interesting transcript, will give their children an advantage in secular affairs. And that's what motivates their interest in what they call classical education. Their interest is secular. They're interested in college admission. They're interested in career preparation and money making. And they imagine that classical education will somehow help them to succeed in that path. And they're, they're completely off track to begin with. But they can't even comprehend the life that was known among medieval Catholics. They can't comprehend it because their, their idea of Christianity, even as Catholics, is highly influenced and dominated by Protestant ideas. I saw this morning, and this is what prompted me to talk about this today, I saw this morning some guy on Twitter who presents himself as a guru on classical education, talking about how the medieval education was responsible for the modern advances in studies and in sciences. He was explaining how classical education, the medieval education, was responsible for humanism and for the Renaissance and for the artwork of men like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. It was responsible for the scientific revolution. It was responsible for all of these modern technical developments that mark the modern world. All of these had their origin, he said, in classical education. And therefore, we should seek to restore classical education, whatever that means. I don't think he has any idea of what that actually means, but he says we should restore classical education so that we can pursue these modern things more successfully. Because after all, they came from classical studies. And so modern schools can't produce success in all of these different areas. But if we would go back to classical education, then we could, we could succeed in natural sciences and mathematics and technology and the arts and so on. These people are clueless. 
these people have no idea what they're talking about. And the, and the number one reason is because they haven't actually themselves as individuals, they haven't pursued classical studies themselves. They're pursuing this idea because they think it gives them something to sell and make money with. It's something different. It's a niche market. They think that this provides them with a, a money-making opportunity. Just like people who sell essential oils and all this stuff as some kind of alternative medicine. They think it gives them an opportunity to make some money. And they're desperate. And there's a reason why they're struggling to find a way to make money in the first place. But so they promote this idea that if we restore classical education, we'll become more successful in modern sciences, mathematics, modern professions, the arts, and so on. And it's just clueless, ignorant, painfully ignorant talk. But it's appealing because most of the audience especially in Catholic circles, is looking for exactly that. They're looking for help to succeed in temporal affairs. And so it works, because that's what Catholics are primarily looking for in education. They're looking for college admission and jobs. They've been completely disconnected from historic Catholic education and culture, because they have a worldview that's Protestant. There's no religious vocations, no contemplative life in their worldview. They believe that going to work is real life and sitting around studying philosophy and religion is irresponsible. You know, unless you're a monk. But they don't ask the question, how does one become a monk? How does one become a priest? How does one become a nun? You don't become a monk and then start learning about prayer and contemplation. You don't become a nun and then learn to think about God. You don't become a priest and then start praying. It works the other way around. And there's a reason why we have no priests, monks, or nuns because we don't teach our children to live and think like Catholic priests and monks and nuns. We teach our kids to think like Protestants. And we urge them to live with a Protestant work ethic. Now, the, what's wrong about this thinking, and again, if, if Catholics would, would make an effort to study, instead of being so vain, wrapped up in all of these idle political controversies, liturgical controversies, all of this shallow YouTube gossip, and would actually take on some adult studies, they could see exactly what the truth is in these matters. For example, if we go back to the 1600s, and I've said this a million times, but no one will listen, but I'll continue to say it anyway, for my own soul's sake. If we go back to the 1600s, we find the writings of Francis Bacon, and he's called the father of the scientific method, the father of modern science. Francis Bacon was an anti-Catholic Englishman. He was an unjust man. He was eventually convicted of, of accepting bribes. He held the same position as St. Thomas More. He was Chancellor of England. But he, unlike Thomas More, who died a saint and was famous for his integrity, Francis Bacon was convicted of taking bribes while in office. But this Francis Bacon, though he couldn't control his own moral life, had truth and learning all figured out in his own mind. 
And so he published books on how to improve learning and improve education. And what his idea basically was, was to completely abandon all classical philosophy, all Catholic teaching that had expanded to address just about every area of life. Just throw that all away and start from scratch. Hit a great reset and start all learning from scratch with scientific experimentation as the means of collecting knowledge. And because of this, he became known as the father of the scientific method. This scientific revolution that followed was an anti-Catholic movement. Now, what we'll find in modern circles is Catholics trying to claim that Catholics were actually the sources of these things, which is ridiculous. And if there were Catholics involved in these things, they may have been innocent, but they didn't understand what was actually going on around them. They may have inadvertently participated in activities that they didn't understand the real nature of, the real intentions behind. Francis Bacon made these intentions clear. And we can judge a tree by its fruits. And if you look at the fruits of the scientific revolution and the society that it's produced, judge the tree by its fruits. Is it a pro-Catholic system? Is it a pro-Catholic culture? Or is it an anti-Catholic culture. The scientific revolution was inspired by hatred for the authority of the Catholic Church. The modern scientific revolution was inspired by hatred for scholastic philosophy. It was an anti-Catholic movement. This is not my opinion. If you would take the effort to open a book and go and actually search these things out, rather than just copying and pasting or parroting the things said by ignorant Catholic people. You can learn this for yourself. Go and read the works of Francis Bacon. Go and read them. Don't put on a YouTube video. Don't read a book about science by some modern Catholic. Go read the source material. Act like an intelligent person and do the work of research and study. Go read the writings of Francis Bacon and you will see that he explicitly criticizes the quote-unquote schoolmen, that is the Catholic scholastic philosophers and theologians, he explicitly rejects the teaching of Aristotle, which is the official philosophy recognized by the Catholic Church. And he himself is an anti-Catholic man living in Protestant England in 1620, a century after the English Reformation. Just for reference, Francis Bacon uh, wrote his book called The New Method around 1620. Thomas More was put to death in 1535, so that gives you an idea of the timeline. About a hundred years after the execution of Thomas More, which marks the beginning of the English Reformation, we have the writing of Francis Bacon and the beginnings of the scientific revolution. Claiming that the scientific revolution came from Catholics is, you know, makes about as much sense as claiming that the Protestant Reformation came from Catholics. Of course it did, but they weren't smart Catholics. They were Catholics who were caught up in the thoughts of their generation that swept them out of traditional Catholicism. Scientific revolution was not the fruit of medieval learning. It was actually a rejection 
of medieval learning. Again, it's like saying that the Protestant Reformation was the result of medieval Catholicism. Maybe we should all pursue medieval Catholicism because it produced the glories of Protestantism. How stupid would that be to say something like that? But that's exactly what these educators say when they talk about classical education, as if the rejection of classical education was accomplished by classical education. It makes no sense. But these people talk about events in history and philosophical movements that they don't understand because they've never taken time to study them. They're just trying to make money off of people who are more ignorant than they are, who they know are too lazy to check what they say or hold them accountable. And it works. It works because the Christian parents aren't going to go check these things. They're going to make decisions based on what seems right to them, what they think, what they like, and so on. Unconscious of the origins of their ideas. And this is how modern Catholic culture works. This is why modern Catholic education is what it is. This is why there are no priests, monks, or nuns. This is why we're closing monasteries rather than building them. This is why we're closing Catholic schools and selling off seminary buildings that were once full. If we raise our children like Protestants, there aren't going to be any religious vocations because Protestantism doesn't believe in religious life. Rather, we're going to have generations of Catholics who live with the Protestant work ethic. And that's what we find in this fake classical education movement. We find an education designed by Protestant ideas for Protestant ideas. And the Catholics promoting these things have never studied the classical liberal arts themselves. They don't know the teachings of Aristotle. They haven't studied the writings of men like St. Albert the Great and St. Thomas Aquinas. Instead of asking what Catholicism teaches first, instead of doing the research and learning what the truth is first, their eyes are on the education market looking for an opportunity. And once they see an opportunity, they don't care whether what they say is true or not. They don't care what the long-term effects will be. They simply see the opportunity to fill a gap and make some money in the modern education market. And that's all that they do. And the parents, because the parents standards of, of study and thinking are so low and frankly the parents don't care they just want the kids out of the house they just want to get to the where the kids are 18 and they can leave because what the kids do after 18 is, is none of their business they don't care they just want to get the kids out to college to career whatever whatever by the time they're done with education, they're serving the, the minimal state education requirements and just getting these kids high school diplomas so they can go find a job, go to college, and so on. That's modern Catholic culture. And these people promoting fake Catholic education who are actually following Protestants who started this in the 1990s, they have success among Catholics because Catholics have no idea what's up or down anymore. They have no idea what saints taught, how saints studied, how saints were educated in generations like the 13th century where we see St. Dominic, St. Albert, St. Thomas, St. Francis, St. Anthony of Padua, all of these saints being produced. No Catholics 
will take the time to ask, how were they taught? How did a generation raise so many learned saints? These weren't men who became Christians as adults and chose to become wise. These were saints who were sent to school as young children to become saints. St. Thomas Aquinas, when he was five years old, was sent to live in a Benedictine monastery by his parents for his education. St. Dominic went to the University of Paris for his theology and philosophy studies when he was 14 years old. These weren't men who became wise as adults. We can find examples of them as well, like St. Ignatius of Loyola. But when St. Ignatius of Loyola, in his 30s, chose to devote his life to Christ, he had to go and go to school with the children who were being taught in the school what he needed to learn to become a priest as a 33-year-old man. That's what the schools were teaching the children. If a 30-year-old man wanted to become religious, he was sent to the grammar schools because that's what they were for. And we have it all wrong today. And there are people I could give names. There are publishers, there are organizations, there are Catholic colleges that are simply making money off of false teaching about education because there's money available, the market is ripe for some alternative that appears to offer something different, even though it doesn't, and rather than have the integrity to research and study and actually restore what's true, they're content to simply give the market, give their customers what they want. And to do that, all they need to do is look over at what the Protestants are doing and simply copy it over into Catholic circles. And that's what Catholics mean when they talk about classical education, great books education. Look at the great books. Half the books on the list were forbidden by the Catholic Church. Catholics didn't read those books. Those books were banished by the Catholic Church. Not today. Now, Catholics immerse themselves in books that the church didn't even allow Catholics to read in the past. Why? Because they're simply following the Protestants. And there are many institutions, many people, many publishers making their life's money off of these errors. I challenge you to not fall for this nonsense. I challenge you, and I, I, I don't think you'll listen. I've, I've been doing this for 20 years now, and I know Catholics, Catholics are committed to these errors. When I got started and opened the Classical Liberal Arts Academy in 2008, I really believed at the time that when I revealed these things to Catholics, there would be sort of an awakening. They would all see what was going on and they would choose to get back to the right road. I've been doing this for almost 15 years now and one thing I have learned is Catholics don't want to return to the right road. They love this fake Protestantish Catholic culture. They're committed to it. This is why we have this rise of the quote unquote Latin mass crowd, which is just Protestantism dressed in Catholic 
clothing, Catholic language, Catholic talk. It's a Protestant idea, Protestant spirit clothed in Catholic appearances. Those people don't want classical Catholic education. They want this fake Protestant classical education, but with Catholic pictures, with the rosary tacked on, with Latin mass, just like the Protestants are all of a sudden zealous to study Latin in their Protestant classical schools, when they were the ones who attacked Latin and argued that the Bible should be translated in everybody's native language. They were the ones who led the assault on classical education. They were the ones who unraveled European culture. Now they pretend that they're its preservers. That's not what they're doing. Protestants are interested in secular ends, and they see some alternative form of education as a way to help them succeed in their secular interests. Because Catholics think the same way, they are content with the Protestants' systems, the Protestants' books, the Protestants' curriculum, and they simply copy it over and Catholicize it superficially by putting pictures of Mary on it, putting pictures of saints on it, giving it some Catholic name, and so on. But it's not the real thing. So, like I said, for my own sake, for my own conscience sake, so that when I stand before God, I can be confident that I spoke truly and warned Catholics of the truth, I'll tell you, children need a true classical Catholic education. Catholic children should be raised for religious vocations. If they choose to not pursue religious vocations, that's fine. That's fine. But they don't need to be educated from first grade to find a secular occupation. What they do need to be educated for from first grade or from their earliest days, what they do need to be educated for is contemplative life. And if we don't give them that education, we're just going to raise a bunch of Protestants at best and atheists at the worst. And if you look around, look around at the Catholic families you know. What are the results? If children choose to pursue secular occupations, that's no problem. That's no problem. But their education does not need to be dedicated to preparation for secular occupations. It's not even how secular occupations work. Education should be directed by preparing children for contemplative life. Preparing children to understand, appreciate, and actually choose to follow Christ's invitation to live a religious life, to devote themselves entirely without distraction to the kingdom of God, confident that God himself promises that those who do so will lack nothing. Have you ever met a priest or monk or a nun who was anxious about where he or she was going to live or what he or she was going to eat or where? No. Christ's promise is fulfilled all over the world every day through all of Christian history. This is what Catholic children should be educated for. And the only way to educate them for this end is true classical Catholic education. And the only place, I can say this with 
full confidence, the only place that you will find this is in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy. One of the proofs that I believe supports our work the most is the fact that we're not only able to restore this education, but we're able to make it the most affordable education that there is. Catholic families can actually afford to give it to their children. We charge $10 per month for student tuition. And it gives children access to everything they need for their studies. $10 per month. It's a system of education designed by wise men who understand that there's not going to be money for expensive tuition because there's not necessarily a financial end to these studies. And it costs nothing, especially in our generation. And so I invite you to visit the, the Academy website at classicalliberalarts.com. Consider the things that I've shared. Do the research yourself. Don't be dumb. Don't be lazy. Do the research yourself. And after you've done so, give your children a real classical Catholic education. Don't pretend to fall for the Protestant stuff and act like it's Catholic. If you want to know what's Catholic, go look at the lives of the saints. This isn't a mystery. Go look at the lives of the saints. How were they educated? They weren't raised like Protestants. They were raised studying the classical liberal arts with a life of contemplation and prayer, seeking first the kingdom of God in front of them. That's what our kids need. God bless.